This morning we're going to discuss capped collections and data expiration. I expect that data expiration will become more important in the future, especially for people on social media. It's one thing I've already heard from a lot of users is they find it more and more creepy that some social networks keep data around forever and that once they post something on Facebook or once they post something on Twitter, it's always around. And even if you delete it, there's all this logging and it, it's, it is actually very disturbing. And again, privacy is, it has not been a big deal in the past, but I expect it to become more and more of a big deal in the future and going forward. Well, the great thing about Mongo is one of the options that we have with MongoDB is that we can cap a collection and without removing any data, literally the most recent data can show and all of the old data can go by the wayside. In other words, not be around. And we'll see that in this example. So we've already discussed what cap collections are. Now note that we'll, when we specify uh, max in terms of documents, we're doing this on a created collection. We're not doing this on a converted collection. But let's suppose that we wanted to basically create a collection and we'll call this a uh, collection called auto privacy and we will set this to be capped so we want the collection to be capped we'll specify the size and bytes to be two but what we're really going to look at is the max to be two And what that means is that the maximum number of documents allowed is going to be two. So now we're going to say DB dot auto, auto privacy. And what I want to do is insert a couple of documents. So the first document that I want to insert is going to post be like, is just to post, hey everyone. And that's the first one. And now the next one that I'm going to insert is just going to be a post in Hey y'all, comma, I just moved. And then of course the final one will be, um, hey y'all, that was a great event last night. Okay, now, so I've inserted three documents. So we have auto privacy, we have hey everyone, hey y'all, I just moved, and we have hey y'all, that was a great event last night. So when I search for the documents, autoprivacy.find.pretty, we would expect to, under normal circumstances, see three documents. But since this is a capped collection and we know that we've capped the document, I'm sorry, yeah, the documents at two, you'll notice that we only see the most recent two, which is, hey y'all, I just moved. Hey y'all, that was a great event last night. So if we think about that in terms of privacy, one of the things that we'll note is that we don't actually, we're not removing data, number one. Um, we, the capped collection is preventing an overflow of documents. And so let's suppose that we wanted to go ahead and say, well, I mean, but you know, that data might be stored somewhere. Well, okay, let's go ahead and do a Mongo dump and let's see what happens um, when we go to uh, that database. And we go to SQL and six and we're looking at auto privacy. So our documents are stored in BSON. And of course, we have to understand that it's going to look really weird, even if I open it in Notepad++, but you'll see, hey, y'all, I just moved. And you'll see, hey, y'all, that was a great event last night. But we don't see, hey, everyone, right? We don't see the post that we made, long window. We don't see the post that we made, um, there it is. We don't see this post, hey, everyone, okay? And so it's interesting because what we have here, what we have going on is a situation in which data, the data that we no longer want, old data are automatically being removed as new data are added. Now, if you think about that, that makes a lot of sense for uh, you know an application or for users who want privacy. It also makes a lot of sense for someone who may be typing a blog and it's like, look, you know, I really only want to show the 50 most recent blog posts because I want the regular readers, the people who've been reading me for many years to be rewarded by having access or by having the history of reading every post. Whereas people who don't read me regularly, you know, if they want to access the older material, I'll go ahead and charge for the older material, but I'm not going to keep it around. And this is very useful because capped collections, by the way, yeah, you have super fast reads and super fast writes. 
Um, there isn't a lot of data in these capped collections, but they're not just useful in those regards. As I said in the, the video about capped collections, they're also useful in the fact that you can use them for data exploration. And in a sense, you can offer your users the ability uh, to basically store their data in a way that limits the amount that's actually kept. And by the way, the great thing about capped collections is if you're building an application and your users say, hey, you know, let's say it was a Facebook-like application, hey, you know, I really only want my last 50 posts to show on my social media profile, you actually could then pass in the, the option to cap that collection, right? In other words, it could store the collection data for the user, but the collection could be capped depending on what the user selects. So if the user always wants their data to be around, you give them that option. But if they don't, and they only want to show the last 10 documents or the last 5 documents or the last 100 documents, they also have that option as well.